what are we going to see from Anarchy this time around? The first game, oh, they're on blue side again, actually. Yeah. Interesting. Will we see the same bands? Well, probably, yeah, I was going to say, probably we'll see the Azir band. And the Shivana, I assume, as well. So, uh, same sides as the last game. I don't know who selected that. I assume that CJ, considering they had blue side first, were selecting what game three was going to be on. So, makes sense. Shivana will be the second ban, and the ban Gragas last time. I'm not sure how <laughs> effective that was. They may try and switch it up to Jace this time around. All right. They're quite worried about, so will they ban the Callista this time? See, Janice, I assume that's going to be the final ban to repeat what we saw in the last game. Now, there was some concern, of course, for Lyra's Gragas after game one, but was, is it ban worthy over a Callista? That's a pretty big question. I would, yeah, I would figure the Callista bad. Callista definitely having a much more impact if it gets out of control. Do you just take the Gragas out here? Well, Maokai has been first picked on blue side in both of the games so far this evening, but you have to be really worried about Shai's rumble. Ixu, see if he may be comfortable in that champion. It's not something that he's really shown yet. Yeah, I really think maybe you do just take the Gragas. A lot of it last time also seems to have been because they wanted that LeBlanc pick and they were taking those away as an option from CJ at the same time. Well, they're going to avoid that. They're just going to take the Gragas and see how CJ responds with the first two sets. Ambition had a really good Sejuani game. Will we see that return or will we see the Rek'Sai come back out? Or the Nidalee for the maximum poke composition now that Jace is gone. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think this time you might as well go for the Rek'Sai, side, try and match that early game aggression. Even though Ambition did have a good game on that Sejuani last time, it's like he may just be power farming his way to six once again. And I like that CJ Entis has this last pick as well. I mean, Mickey, obviously the major threat, as well as that synergy between Mickey and Lyra when they gank the side lanes. So if you can neutralize him, perhaps you can do something. Now. They're not too worried about giving that LeBlanc up again, but remember that Coco also a major threat on LeBlanc, so Thresh says, says one, same first two picks as the last game. Yeah, going for something that doesn't really give a tell necessarily on their team composition, both really safer champions, of course, a signature one for Mad Life. Mad Life was so good on that Thresh in the last game. The yeah. number of hooks he landed, the way he played those team fights. It's very reminiscent of Mad Life of Old. And that's what I like to see, Chobra. Don't we all, don't we all? The old Mad Life blitz I don't think tricks. I don't think Anarchy likes to see it, but <laughs> it may be the exception. All right, Hecarim and Sivir will be locked in. They don't want to give space that champion. That is kind of his signature over the past season. Back yeah. to him once again. Space has the option to play Lucian right here. Space will play Corky from time to time as well in this particular situation. And it would set them up again for a nice mid-game power spike, which is what they rode to victory. Ooh, uh -oh. he played Jinx in their playoff match. It didn't work too well for them. They're gonna uh -oh. lock it in, though. He's not smiling, but he shows a lot of confidence. And are we gonna see that rumble come in again for Shy? Hikram has already been selected in the top lane on the flip side. And of course, they do want to keep that mid lane as the last option against Mickey to counterpick. Looks like it might just be Rumble, all right. Locked in. This music is a lot more bass heavy than I, when I was listening at home, it wasn't this hard, but in the studio, it really gets you into the groove. It's uh, grooving now. I like how it switches between the old one to the new one too. Just uh, makes it for a more interesting, there we're, we're, yeah. we're back to the old one. All right. Yeah. Morgana, possible support pick here up against the Thresh, so a little bit of a counter yeah. pick, and then Lulu. So Anarchy may be going for a little bit more of a movement-based composition with this Hecarim and Sivir. They're going to be able to make picks very effectively with this comp if they want to go for it. Whoa. That was a sudden switch. I mean, Morgana. I mean, I like the Morgana Lulu here. I think it's strong with the champions they've already selected. Do think it was pretty good, but are we gonna see? Yeah, Morgana and then Vladimir. The loop. 
I'm actually not sure if you were going to go Morgana. I would have just liked to see the Lulu continued with that. Um, but yeah, you, you have two spell shields in that case. Could be a, a strong situation. Of course, the Cassiopeia of Vladimir not going to be putting much pressure on the Cassie early. So you're no. going to get a lot of time to farm up your tier under those circumstances and really try and bully out your opponent. This would be a good situation for Cassiopeia to be in. Generally, just a good pick against a team that has to run at you for any relevant form of engage, except for the teleport coming in from Hecarim. Yeah, I think I would have preferred the Lulu here, frankly. I think or, if you have to blind pick it, Lulu's a safer blind pick right. as well compared to the Vladimir because you really are weak pre-level 9, level 10 on this Vlad pickup. So if they pick something that scales really well, there's not a lot of punishment that you can dish out, especially on a champion as strong right now as Cassiopeia. Yeah, C yeah, CJ lost in Cassiopeia. I mean, CJ has the potential to end team fights within the first three seconds here if they get some good ults and then Jinx just going at it with her rockets. But that said, Sivir and Hecarim are very strong against Jinx yes. due to her low mobility, her lack of movement uh, dashes or anything like that, movement abilities. So any kind of flank could be highly deadly coming in with this Hecarim. And of course, just that threat of running straight at somebody as well with the Sivir ultimate. Cassiopeia, not a lot of movement as well. So CJ going to have to be pretty precise in there. Sejuani, Cassiopeia, and Rumble Ultimates. They want to make the most out of this situation, but they do have good protection and hard CC on pretty much everybody except for Rumble, so they do have some pretty solid feel. Yeah, and Anarchy is back to the same combination of Hecarim and Vladimir and Gragas as the first game, and so we'll see if that works out just as well. Ixu had some really good teleports, some decent ults, and good flanks coming in with the home guard and Lyra with really just amazing uh, explosive cast actually disrupting the entire team fight so that could really help pick off space and continue the fight. We'll find out as we jump right into game three between Anarchy and CJ Antis. It's the last game of the day guys here for Champion Summer 2015. Going with that flash ghost again, and this time ignite for Coco. And look at that, Mickey has the right runes this game. Oh. Managed to actually win with his, I presume, Zed runes. Yeah, it looked like it. <laughs> Armor penetration runes. But he did well. Got some solo kills all the same without having that little boost of magic penetration, so. And maybe he will do even better this time. I loved watching his Vladimir play, just hunting down that vein, punishing her in the side lanes. And now we see Coco and Mad Life. Kind of interesting three man unit moving around right now. Yeah. Snowflower getting some extra gold with that early harass. So Deep Ward into the red buff by Anarchy, seeing the three people on the bottom side so they can safely walk in and. Get some vision over that red buff. Looks like we're not going to see any kind of lane swap this game. Instead, Hecarim looking to see if he can sort of take a camp and then head back to shop once he knows what the laning situation is and which items he needs, whether it's a cloth armor or just a stack of potions. It will yep. be a stack of potions. Yes. <laughs> no lane swap coming in from C CJ. Uh, no Gromp once again for the CJ duo either. So CJ also trying to hold off to see what the lane situation is, it appears. And we're back to the farming mid laner. Oh, some harass them, but it won't really last that long. Nice poison there. Getting a little ticks of damage, but not anything too much yet. Wow, play start oh. right there. Song Yu needing a huge amount of damage from the rocket, so Wow, a little bit of mispositioning already, and Snowflower not able to punish that with just his W. Meanwhile, Mad Life is going to dance around the tar, and that's a huge chunk taken right off the bat for 
an 80 carry, of course, only having that item and no Relic Shield either on this Morgana, of course, yeah. to help get some of that HP back. So uh, Anarchy actually just going to straight up lose this lane hard unless something changes with a gank. Yeah, there's not much you can do, especially post level two. I mean, sure, you can have your spell shield and black shield once the wave pushes up, but it's not going to help you catch up, per se. And Lyra, Lyra skipping. the king of the cheese gank. <laughs> Walked all the oh, way from man. red for that one. I mean, he was looking for an angle to three minute gank top lane, and given his jungle pathing, that would be quite surprising for him to walk into your lane and top <laughs> with a red buff from blue side at three minutes. And he wanted to punish the fact that Rumble doesn't have, you know, just force that flash right there, but he's not going to find that opportunity. Shy playing it a little far, further back. Yep. And, you know, Coco, if he continues to land, his Q's as well as he did at level one. He'll also stack his passive really quickly. Let's see how well that goes for him. Interesting that Maokai just fell entirely through the draft this game. Of course, yeah. both teams first picking blue side on, or Maokai and blue side, and both teams losing with it, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Maokai, oh, how things change so quickly in League of Legends at MSI. Is kind of the must pick for victory, and here we go. Well, it was yesterday, too. Lots of Maokai yeah. play, and the qualifiers also, so that priority definitely has gone up, but Shy just snowballing straight through on that rumble in the last game, having some great ultimates and good contributions to those team fights, and also his the lack of magic resist coupled with Shy's flat pen. And Itemization Lira. was good. Lyra's coming in, though. Still here, they're gonna blow the flash from Shy. And that's all Anarchy really wanted from that gank anyway. That's all you can really expect. I mean, Shy doesn't have any wards in the top side right now. He did have one that he could have placed in Tribe Rush just to make it a little bit safer. But oh, here we nice go. Nice start finding onto space, but CJ's turning things around with a lot of damage onto Sang Yoon. So Anarchy can't try to continue that advantage they got with the binding, and here comes Ambition. There's a possibility to dive this, definitely. Yeah. Space is healing up with a potion. They can get under this tower. Ambition is here. Now they know that Gragas was just topside. They're going to go for it. I love it. And Sang Yoon is caught. He gets slowed, and there's the play onto Sang Yoon. Summoner heal goes down. First blood goes over to the ignite from Mad Life. Ambition does take a lot of damage, but takes the oh. legend out. Oh, eventually still gets followed by that last hit. Yeah, he actually didn't quite drop tower aggro while he was on the perimeter yeah. right there. So a little bit of a misplay. Ambition probably could have dropped that aggro. Uh -oh. And now Lyra's coming in. And, and there's the zap is, missing. Yeah, Space is just caught in a lot of trouble. There's the Starbinding and the knockback from Lyra to pick up the kill onto Space. Yeah, well, that was a good idea from CJ, but they actually misplayed it pretty badly right there. And then Space sticking around too far up, but well, look who else is too far up. It's going to be Exu. <laughs> I'm not sure how he got all the way back there, actually. <laughs> That's a long he way He was away. proxy farming <laughs> after he saw Ambition in the bottom side. <laughs> I actually haven't seen somebody die in a 1v1 proxy kill in a while. That was... I want to see what happened because that was not normal. Yeah. Well, Especially pre-ult as well. Yeah. And Mickey... His flash is down, and that's a three-man gang coming in, and Mad Life play not going to go in. The hook oh. onto Mickey as he comes up from the pool. Dark binding onto Ambition, but the damage still following through from Coco, and Coco gets an early kill. Mad Life is on four with yeah. this thresh. <laughs> it's doing really well. Snowflower hitting some good bindings too, but it's not enough to turn things around for his team just yet. And that's going to be so good for Coco too. Getting the kill while he has that tier. Starting to shove this lane up. Mad Life taking out this pink ward ever so slowly as they attempt to set up for this dragon. Ambition wants to take it right now. Jinx going to make a move, but is actually currently blocked by Song Yoon. So yeah. Space can't get into River no, at the moment. He's he actually, actually taking just, a lot of damage and Snowflower doing? showing up. Sang Yoon, one more boomerang blade is all he needs. There's the flash coming in and teleport from Shy onto Snowflower and Sang Yoon, but there's the dark binding and a nice teleport in from Ixen from behind. He it. steals the dragon with Onslaught of Shadows. And Shy also gets caught back by Snowflower and Sang Yoon. So actually right there, Ixu has that smite, remember? So we actually <laughs> engaged in a smite battle with Ambition and won, shockingly enough. So Ixu putting that teleport to work and Shy not dropping the equalizer action on the bottom side. I think he may have been able to do some more damage down there. Yeah, I think he was trying to hold off to see if he can join his team in the river, but it ended up not working out for him. 
like you said, Ixu with a big play for Anarchy. CJ's still ahead in gold, of course, thanks to the extra kill, but the Anarchy is going to be pretty satisfied with that first stack of the Dragon. Yeah, it's definitely CJ's to lose right there, especially since they had that position on the bottom side. Space, though, really just trying too hard to get into the river <laughs> without enough vision and intercepted almost immediately by Song Yoon and Stoneflower. It was just a 1v2, so space positioning, not the greatest, but Yeah, and the wow. flash four from Snowflower after they try to zone space out with the boomerang blade, he is gonna get the stun, and there's the dark binding, and oh, Tormentor Soil, but space goes in with the zap, and they play him back into the tower. Space gets the kill. A little bit overly ambitious in that situation. Ambition just gonna go ahead and take those wolves on the opposite side. A lot of vision there, so they knew that that was a safe move to make, actually. So Anarchy not taking a lot of risk in terms of anyone else joining the fray with the teleports down and the deep wards into the bottom side jungle, but still not quite calculating that damage well enough. And Madlife able to save his AD carry by lanterning him back in and then hitting some clutch plays and sp space setting up the traps quite nicely. Yeah, and Yoon was, of course, zoned out by the minion wave and also, they just thought they had the upper hand on space. So CJ is still going strong, keeping their lead, and Coco stacking up his passive nicely onto Mickey. Yeah, this is this is not what you want to have a Cassiopeia in the early game, getting that <laughs> kill, and just basically free farming at the moment. Coco is going to be absolutely terrifying come the late game at this stage. Yeah, Mickey had to start with a Spectre's Cal because he was getting harassed so hard. And that's also going to delay just Vladimir's power that's, by a lot. That's an insane power trap that he's in right now. Having to go for the Cowl this early on, uh, really a bad situation. Not even just building Negatron, then maybe trying to transition into Abyssal later. Just straight up Cowl <laughs> getting that HP. So that's not going to turn into anything useful for quite some time. And now Mickey's really not going to do damage until he gets three or four core items. And by that time, Cassiopeia is going to be an absolute nightmare to deal with. Yeah, I don't really see any option here other than maybe Ixu and Lyra helping cut off Coco a couple times. Lyra's here in the bottom lane. Nice explosive cast onto space. There's no option for escape this time with Mad Life going on a roam. Yeah, he's just trying to clear out vision right there. But again, Lyra really showing up on this Gragas. That's what's been great. Lyra's mechanics on this champion have set up so many plays for Anarchy, especially in that game one, and he makes it work again. Of course, going Space not having that flash up yet, so really no defense. And Space wasn't playing too dangerously either. He was trying to farm next to his tower, yeah. but there's nothing you can do right there when the on the hunt comes through and you're knocked into three people with the explosive cast. Snowflower and Madlife did see Joe Sang Yoon flashing out from the Arctic Assault. I actually don't think he used a flash right there. There was no chance that Jinx was going to be there and everyone else was accounted for with no TP, so you probably could have just gotten hit by that Arctic Assault and just walked back under the turret pretty safely, so a little bit, little bit trigger happy on that summoner spell that's going to provide more opportunities for CJ and to, to gank now. Yeah, a ro big roam coming in from Mad Live. Anarchy does spot it though. So we're gonna have Ixu back off from top lane of Mad Life just to come back around to the mid side. Looking for an angle. Snowflower is also here. Snowflower will get spotted by three pink lords. We'll take one of them out, maybe. As two members of CJ also come in to join the fray. Trying to pressure Snowflower out of there. He already got one pink out though from the brush. Look at this mid priority though in terms of vision. CJ Ant is really wanting to punish Mickey. They're coming in with a game plan which is destroy Mickey and Anarchy can't do anything, which... And a beautiful ult coming in from Ambition. Locks up two people, Snowflower goes out immediately. Dark Binding does keep Coco at bay, but a nice ult from Cassiopeia as they chase down onto Lyra. Another play from Madlife, can he get another hook? No, Sang Yoon's here. Coco got a little bit too happy about getting that kill, and they're gonna give the shutdown go onto Mickey. Oh, oh, oh the Super oh, Mega oh, Death Rocket oh, oh. from <laughs> Space will pick up the kill. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Very accurate finisher there coming in from Space. Just zooming in from the side of the screen. And there was no real defense there for Mickey. Had his flash, but not quite quick enough on the trigger. 
And let's take a look at this again. I mean, this engage right here. So Ambition, oops, he actually oh. uh, botched his Arctic <laughs> Assault over the wall right there and couldn't had to flash as a result in order to get up onto the high ground. Uh, there's Mad Life with the follow-up right there. And uh, Sang Yoon in a pink warded brush on the road. CJ doesn't have the information in the bottom side jungle to move up that far, and they get punished for it. But there Ooh. you go, Vicky. Good finish. And the teleport coming in from Ixu was a little late for the situation. So they didn't get much out of that. CJ going for the dragon. Now there's really nothing that Anarchy can do about this. Of course, Shai does have his TP still available, and Ixu back in his own jungle at this point, just satisfying himself with farming some wolves. So trying to get the steal with the Dark Binding and the Boomerang <laughs> Blade flying in at precisely the same time, but that's not going to work on this attempt. And Coco continues just to bully his opponent. Mickey, fortunately for him, did get some nice gold off of that shutdown onto Coco, so completed his spirit visage. But this is a very <laughs> low damage Vladimir right now. Congratulations, he'll be able to stay alive <laughs> yeah. through a lot. But. I mean, <laughs> it does kind of hurt that that was where the gold had to go for Mickey. But better than no gold at all. So Mickey will now start building up some damage with that amplifying tone. Leading into a revolver, no doubt. Ooh, an amp tone. <laughs> so scary. The damage. <laughs> Mickey's hitting the books. <laughs> How do books turn into guns, Chobra? <laughs> I mean, there's, I mean, swords. Isn't, isn't that antithetical to knowledge in the first place? Don't we have to ask ourselves these, these questions? If you if you are a learned man from books, shouldn't you not be making guns? Well, both turn into swords. I mean, I don't know. Bows have a significant advantage over his swords. I don't know why you trade that in, man. You would never bring a, a sword to a bow fight? No, I don't think so. Coco just keeping Mickey at bay this whole time. Well, Coco has also been able to not build the Abyssal Scepter first, which is great for him because he can get the Archangel Staff and really build for damage right now, just because Mickey is no threat to him in terms of trades with all this spirit visage first nonsense. Yeah. Uh, Coco, the only thing he needs to worry about is ganks, and he's well prepared for that with all the vision from himself and his teammates. I mean, Mickey, every time he goes in from one CS, he loses half his health. And then he finally claws back into full health when the wave hits the tower. Well, it's good containment from CJ. Uh, you've seen that everyone is playing around this. Mad Life's been leaving lane just to pink ward up the mid lane this entire game. It's, they're just putting Mickey yep. on notice here. I mean, just putting that pressure down as much as possible. And here we go. CJ again. Trying to clear out some of these pink wards. Push Lyra out of the bottom side. And look at that. I mean, Mickey just can't do anything. Oh my <laughs> taking down the tower. Yeah, CJ also feeling a little more comfortable playing slightly aggressive here in the jungle because Shy has his teleport and Ixu does not yet. And so they're able to take a lot of vision advantage because they're of taking this. Taking out a huge amount of wards during this period. And Mickey trying to get up there, <laughs> tied to blood. Like, no. I, uh oh, okay. this is gonna turn to one v one fight. There's Ixu though, nice flash from Coco, but he will play. He's gonna lantern out, and he's gonna live even after the explosive cast. Nice old turnaround from Ambition coming in. Teleport from Shy from behind. Lyra will go down to Coco after that shield from the Archangel staff, and there we go. Shy going in for the kill. Ambition actually picking that one up. Yeah, Ixu trying to make a play right there. They actually attempted to bait Coco into that, but Mad Life coming up again with the plays. The last two games have basically just been a Mad Life highlight reel so far. Yeah, really good awareness for his teammates and what kind of danger they might be in. Coco, of course, upgrading that Seraph's Embrace just in time to have that shield after the last push and lane. Yeah, that was actually a very fortuitous upgrade yeah. during that timing <laughs> because it's not looking too good before that. So Mickey just baits him in right here. I mean, Ixu is waiting. It's a nice setup, and they think they can take down Coco and uh, turn this game around just a little bit. But there's the shield ripping him out of harm's way. And Mickey does go down to the Dix Ambition, also there to wrap people up with the Glacial Prison. And there's the TP advantage that you mentioned. Anarchy overcommits to that one pure through and through. Once you see Coco get lanterned out, you're done. You can't make any more plays. You have to know that if you keep pursuing, you will get teleported on, and you will lose that fight. So, I like the idea, but the, the follow-up was a little 
bit aggressive. Coco now has a death cap. Surprise rumble, ooh, ow. Oh, that hurts a lot. Well, I mean, Ixu has another health crystal right here, but it looks like he's probably going to be going for the Trinity Force again just to take out Jinx, but that's not going to help him in lane very much versus Shy. Okay, just gonna melt that Hacker Imp in lane. You know what else is weird? Hats are stronger than guns and swords. I mean, hats are like the strongest thing. Learning a lot from TF2 here. <laughs> hats are OP. Especially the, the sorting hat. <laughs> the they, sorting hat is pretty strong. <laughs> sorting hat is the most OP item in League of Legends. <laughs> and Anarchy trying to get some semblance of vision control back near the dragon as it spawns in 50 seconds while Coco still has full control over what Mickey can do in this game. Which is not much after that kind of lead for the Cassiopeia. Oh, not up for Coco though, so that's something that Anarchy can maybe try to abuse in a team fight. Although they are pretty behind on levels too. You know what item I want to see? So it, it starts with a long sword. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait. Oh, am I going to be able uh, to describe this or is CJ going to do something exciting well like dive this tower? Yeah, they're looking for a dive and Sang Yoon and they're going to turn back around onto Ambition, but Matt Life's right there. Nice black shield will prevent the hook and Ambition just took a beating there. So here's here's my great idea for an item, Joe. Are you ready? I'm it, ready. It starts with a long sword or a BF sword, and it's called Swords to Plowshares, and it just turns into an item that gives you. It doesn't give you damage; it just gives you more, more gold from farm. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds. <laughs> that sounds pretty reasonable. So you, you get some damage initially, but as soon as you create the the item, you actually just get more gold from farm, and your damage just no no additional damage. So <laughs> you just ramp it up. It's like it's like a really terrible avarice blade. <laughs> you know what you should do? You should get enough referrals and then try to make that into a real thing here at League of Legends. Uh, actually, Anarchy got two towers in exchange for that little dragon right there. So nice. Bounce back in terms of gold, still behind thanks to the 10 kills already racked up by yeah. CJ Antis and the fact that they're just really equalizing in terms of turrets right now. Mickey is getting closer to his Will of the Ancients, but still pretty far behind, especially considering Coco already has a death cap and that Archangel staff. Yeah, Shy also on his. Oh, he built the giant spell afterwards. Doesn't feel the need for the full Zonius just yet. I wants to go for Rhylize, which is pretty reasonable considering the speed boost coming in from Anarchy, and it will allow him just to go ahead and peel that off a little bit better. And uh, of course, help Coco just kite through all of these very rapidly moving champion ambitions trying to steal it. <laughs> Not sure he did. Did he get it? I think he so. He got it, yes. Yeah. Well, nice steal from Ambition. Not too much of a takeaway from Vladimir. I mean, you don't really care about that. Right. Uh, more so from Lyra than Vladimir, but all the same. I mean, Lyra is okay without it. Just would prefer it if he had the choice. Good. Another measly large rod here for <laughs> Coco. I, I, mean, I don't know what you can do against the CJT. I wonder if he's actually going to go for a... Zonia's Hourglass here, just because Hecarim and Sivir are the main damage threats at this point in time, or whether he's going to go for a Luton's Echo, which of course is an excellent item on Cassiopeia, considering how much you move and spam spells, really can do a whole hell of a lot of damage yeah, I with think an Echo. Given the way the team's been playing, I wouldn't be surprised if he went for the Echo. I mean, Ambition and Mad Life really on top of keeping Coco go. defended, but here comes the tower. Oh, it just gets denied by Ambition, but a nice deny from Ixu on return. A nice ult keeping Snowflower at base. Angus gonna rock right onto that equalizer and it hits two people, but Coco is still down and Shy actually gets caught by four people. Super Mega Death Rocket not getting a kill and Sang Yu comes around the wall to pick up another kill onto Shy. That was just a great engage right there. Not one that CJ was expecting, but it was a 5v4 over the course of that. They realized that this Jinx was just farming in the bottom lane and so that they could take some sort of advantage. And now they're going to pile through, get a turret as well. 
in exchange for a, and a couple of kills is to boot, so they pull themselves nearly back even in this game off a very decisive engage, and they got Shai's teleport as well, so pretty even in terms of the summoners utilized, but just taking advantage of the fact that CJ wasn't grouped and Anarchy was. Matt Life charging forward to try to catch up to Lyra as Ambition finds him first. Mickey is a little bit away, and he does get the hook. There's a zap. Space coming in for the damage. Can he get the kill? Should be able to. There's the explosive cast. Ambition actually picks that one up. I'm gonna try and Baron right now. Pings right down onto the Baron. But Cassie be over at blue buff, and there is Mickey on hook dodging duty. And it looks like Aspia just wants to split down into the bottom side. So no real threat at the Baron right now. CJ just starting to set up. Maybe they can force a favorable fight in a few minutes. Shy. Clean up some ways with Sang Yoon doing some decent damage now. Caspio actually gonna loop around the backside to try and take out Sang Yoon here. Oh, but they're gonna run into four people if they don't watch out. So Anarchy going all the way into their jungle. Iksu coming forward and will just back out after all that damage. Thank you to sets to use on the hunt to just run away from ambition. Anarchy got split in their own jungle with yeah. the invade coming in. Good collapse right there from CJ to force some pretty crucial ultimates out of Anarchy. And now they're going to force a face check as well as they Go through the motions of taking down. Oops. Oh, the ult not gonna connect with Snowflower there for the stun. So CJ actually will have to give up on some of that that they set up at the Baron as Anarchy starts to push towards this tier two and mid. It's actually a huge ultimate to lose right there. A bit over, overly aggressive considering the Snowflower is playing Morgana. They do have that black shield to use as well. To block some of these ultimates coming in, so a little bit more tempered in their engage. CJ could have been very patient right there considering they had full vision control over the Baron pit and picked a more favorable engagement. Yeah, the Black Shield has been doing a lot of work with them. It helped Sang Yoon evade the Equalizer last fight, although he was on top of it. Well, they do have the double spell shield composition going for them right now. 40 seconds until Dragon, Scuttler in the hands of Anarchy as Lyra takes it and Everyone's starting to rush down there. Anarchy with the decisive ward advantage, however. Yeah, no teleports on either side, so Hecker will have to choose a good time to start moving downward. Ping going on in top lane, but I don't think you want to show up there without the teleport with 15 seconds left on the dragon, if you can help it. Do have ultimates on either side. Sejuani's will be up soon for Ambition. Yeah, they really need that up, so CJ can't just go uh -oh. for the dragon immediately. Ambition controlling this choke right now. Glacial Prison back up, but they have to beat back Anarchy as they try and put some pressure on the bottom turret. Space has to run the very long way around at this point. Nobody here to defend. Shy has to decide what he wants to do. No dive coming in yet from Anarchy. Space still not there. He was trying to farm in bottom side. Slow push making its way towards the tier two of Anarchy, but Anarchy uses the time to get the position in the river on the Dragon and outmaneuvering CJ Antis for the moment. Yeah, lots of damage done onto the tier two also. Ambition actually gets caught, will be able to dash over the wall. Not taking too much damage. And Sang Yoon tries to go for some of his own poke with the movement by CJ this time pushing Anarchy back out after Ambition and Madlife keep them at bay, and they're going to start the Dragons going down really quickly thanks to the Jinx and Cassiopeia. Can Anarchy get the seal? Nice hook onto Ekram and a nice Sejuaniel onto Lyra. CG will get the Dragon. Ambition does get caught on, so Shadows goes in for the kill. He will play onto Coco. Mickey still going at it. There's the Zonias and Lyra comes back. Madlife trying to get the play, not going to connect, but Space gets it, and now he's excited. He's going for the team fight. He's going to get the kill onto Sang Yoon. He's going forward for another one onto Lyra. Nice slow from him, but the Zap for the double kill and he's still trying to chase Ixu but I oh he flashes forward and he's getting this hit onto Ixu he needs about two more there's the zap oh nice dodge by Ixu as his speed comes back up and Shine not going to find Snowflower right there Snowflower actually just going to recall in the pink ward but CJ Antis picked the perfect time to go onto that dragon so what happened that prompted that is that right there the two spell shields were used so CJ had a really good timing to get onto the dragon right there. Shy 
trying to zone out everybody, hits a nice equalizer that slows down Lyra engaging into this team fight. I think he does a good job of zoning out, but Space turns this thing pretty darn quickly. They don't have vision in the brush right there, so CJ able just to play with the brush in order to make sure that a lot of the damage just is missed out on by Anarchy, but why they decided to go for the Dragon immediately was there was a bit of a mistake made by Anarchy where Snowflower and Sangyun both used their spell shields at the same time onto Sivir, which yeah. meant that those were on cooldown. So there wasn't really a good way to get Sivir in a position where uh, Sivir wasn't going to get crowd controlled in that situation. So they were a little bit worried about that. So that's why CJ went onto it instantly after seeing the Black Shield and the Spell Shield go down. Oh, well done by CJ for sure. Rylai's now completed for Shy. Coco also had a pretty good ult in that fight. Of course, Mickey pulling under it to try to get more damage down, but couldn't finish the snake. Nice hook. That'll also be blocked by a nice black shield. And CJ now taking control, or trying to take control of the Baron area. Yeah, they only have one lens right now, though, or upgraded Oracle's lens, so they don't have the best ability to bait right now because Anarchy has managed to see uh, the Mickey tried to and turn it around with a Hebo Plague onto two members, mainly onto Coco, but they're not going to find the fight they want. Ambition trying to find an angle for Glacial Prison. Won't get it, though. Well, they actually got a TP advantage for that. Yes, they had to blow Mickey's Flash and the Sivir Ultimate, but Chai needing to TP in immediately so that Anarchy didn't get another 4v5. It was actually a pretty good bait, and Anarchy really coming out ahead on that one. Now they can sort of safely split push as we see the pings coming down, Iksu heading into the top side. All right, CJ still ahead, about 3K in gold. And, I mean, they are ahead in pretty much all fronts, if you really think about it. But if Anarchy keeps this up, and once Mickey finally climbs back into shape in terms of items, Anarchy could try to get a really sick team fight off to turn the game on its head. They just have to keep methodically clearing out these wards. They need to go back and buy more pings. Shy returning right now with a pink ward of his own, just so they can actually start effectively baiting this Baron pit. Yep. There we go. Coco in the front line. Snowflower actually going to get caught after his black shield is down, but a nice start finding on Coco will keep him at base. Snowflower dodges the super mega death rocket, does still get locked up, and the last rocket from space will go in. Good play onto Ixu, not going to connect with the death sentence, though. Now they can start at least trying to do this Baron right now. See if they can force the engagement. Shy does have Equalizer up. They're going to stand in that dot brush, but there's pings going down, so Anarchy has a good idea what's going on. Death sentence will miss. Shy just going to pop out of the brush and fire off a couple of harpoons before they start their work onto this Baron. Uh, Mission's taking a decent amount of damage. They're going to have to watch out even with all these shields. And Anarchy's looking to come in. There's a ghost. And Hebo Play got to three people pulling under, trying to get the kill onto Ambition. Not going to get it. There's a Zonias for Mickey, but that's just going to extend the time while CJ turns it around. Shy trying to chase everyone away. He is overheated. Ambition very low. Nice boomerang blade onto Shy, but Sang Yoon very low. Explosive cast comes in. They can't get the kill onto Space, though, as Ixu gets broken. Frozen by Coco, so does Lyra, and that turns into another kill for Space. Can he chase forward? Ixu's pretty healthy. CJ will back out. Well, they did stop the Baron from going down, which was the main goal in that engagement, but they lost more than they gained, so CJ just slowly inching their way closer to a win right here. Now they have a chance to set up in the next minute for this Dragon. See what they buy on their way back. So nothing quite yet for Coco. I'm curious item he's going to go for, and it will be a Zonia, so he's right. a bit afraid right now of Hecram's ability to get on top of him. He has been chunked out of these fights pretty early, so can hardly blame him. Yeah. I mean, Vladimir's still just not doing a whole <laughs> lot of damage here. He got the Zonia's Hourglass, but still working his way slowly towards the Will of the Ancients. Meanwhile, Coco outputting heaps of damage right now, and Back to clearing out Baron Vision. 30 seconds until Dragon. And CJ more concerned with the top side of the map, or at least making sure they don't accidentally trade a Dragon for a Baron right now. Yeah, good idea. Ixu did also get the Skull Crab for Anarchy, a Dragon. So Anarchy does have some control over what's going on in that side of the map. 
Interesting. Snowflower looks like he's going Righteous Glory on Morgana. That not a very common build that you see right there, but they really want to all in on this Jinx. Maybe it will work. I mean, has has some merit behind it on paper. CJ is just going to start the Dragon. They can finish it so fast with the Cassiopeia and the Jinx, but Lyra looking for a steal. There's the Explosive Cassie and the Black Shield. Sejuani still gets the Smite ambition, securing the Dragon for CJ and an Equalizer to try to turn things around. Hebo playing onto four people. Mickey is zoned out of the fight as Ixu also has to run away, but there's the follow through onto Ixu from Ambition. He will get out of it at the end, and CJ and just not going to find a kill. Zap onto Lyra, but he's pretty healthy. They were also making sure that CJ doesn't pursue any of his teammates. Yeah, safely backing away. Ixu is low, but CJ's not going to go ahead and risk another Baron attempt right now. Just go ahead, play this one methodically. Wanting to take this series home in as safe a manner as possible. Anarchy definitely putting up a good fight this time. Continuing to contest these objectives as best as they are able and staying relatively even in terms of gold, but CJ is looking much more on form in this one. You have to hand it to Anarchy though for the I mean, taking CJ to three games and winning game one as decisively as they did and then putting up a fight here is impressive for this very new team. Absolutely. I mean, people were expecting Anarchy to just kind of fall through to the bottom of the league very quickly, but. Well, I think if they were still playing with CV Max, they would. This is, <laughs> also, it's not very Anarchy. that This is not exactly the same team we saw. Uh. In, in the qualifiers. True. Let's see if they can uh, continue to improve across the season and maybe take a mid-range spot on the rankings by the end of the summer season. Wouldn't be too surprising given how they're playing, especially if maybe they can pick up a supporting staff as they go through. Yeah, hopefully they can find a major title sponsor soon, but after seeing these first couple of days, I'm sure that they're going to be quite an attractive opportunity for Sponsors. Yeah, wouldn't be too surprised. And CJ, now really good shape in terms of items. He can pressure the lanes fairly well. Lyra gets caught out a little bit by space. He's gonna want to back out. Those rockets will start to hit you pretty hard with the crits from IE. Finally starting to push forward. I mean, CJ on the cusp of that fifth. Baron regardless, or Dragon rather, regardless, and they have enough pink wards to fully clear out that Dragon Pit right now, even if the Oracle looks down, Whoa, but they're gonna find Ixu. Ixu. is gonna get hit pretty hard, eventually runs away, and there's a Super Mega Death Rocket not gonna connect, but that keeps Ixu zone. Lyra gets caught, there's the Black Shield, nice explosive cast to keep us up alive, but what an ultimate coming in from Ambition, lining them up for the Equalizer Space, going in, gets the kill on to Mickey, a double kill for Space. This that was just, such oh a man. good equalizer from Shy to follow through while Space was carving through the turret so he could reset and then join the rest of his teammates. And CJ looking to continue rolling right now, just trying to wait for this minion wave, see if they can actually do just a little bit more damage to the base before they have to retreat 20 seconds on the main carries. Yeah, there is a lot. There's nice a teleport, teleport from Shy. And we are going to see the tower getting chipped through. I mean, Space is just going to chunk these out as Ixu also gets caught and goes down as Lyra finally spawns back up. Snowflower also getting caught. CJ enters with a nice victory in game three. Should be able to take the series 2 1 over Anarchy. Well, great win from CJ Entis, and they had to turn it on a little bit after they got a bit of an attempt to style in the first <laughs> game, backfired on them, but Anarchy showing that they can at least demand a level of respect from these yeah. top teams after upsetting Najin 2-1 yesterday and even taking a game today from CJ Entis. However, Shai's rumble, pretty damn scary, but frankly, Mad Life was the MVP for me for that last game. Just really, really good map good plays. plays. Seriously good hooks and plays.